Okay, everyone. Now, welcome to the uh, developer. Ask me anything. Uh, we have uh, Blender developers here lined up. Uh, we're going to start with asking every developer shortly to say the name and what they do or did for Blender, and then I and Plasma Solutions or Thomas Beck, we will look at other sites and we are going to uh, ask, give people microphones. And you can have any question you want, but it has to be something related to software development. Okay? Let's start. Hi, I am Simran. I work for the Blender Institute, and I'm the um, coordinator for the animation module working on Alembic and USD. Hi, I'm Aaron, and I work mostly on documentation and fix small annoyances inside Blender. My name is William Rainish, and I work as a user interface designer. Hello, I'm Julien Durour. I'm currently the main developer of GLTF import and export. Hi, I'm Mike. I did a lot of the OpenGL upgrade for 2.8, and uh, now I'm independently working on uh, game development tools for Blender. I'm Pablo. I'm a character artist, and I design and code the scale mode tools. I'm uh, Jeroen, I'm a coordinator of uh, sculpting, vertex painting, and uh, a lot of stuff, and I do a lot of uh, drawing code. Hi, I'm Sebastian Parborg, and I'm more of a jack-of-all-trades guy. I do a bit of everything, I feel, uh, but right now it's mostly animation system or stuff like that. Hi, I'm Jack. I'm currently working on the new node-based particle system. The fans. I'm Julian, also working at the Institute. I'm doing UI development, like workspaces and file browser and uh, VR. VR and everything, and you are. I am Stefan, and I'm mostly working on cycles. I'm Bastian, I'm mostly working on data management or library or write, uh, asset management, all that kind of stuff. I'm Ines. Uh, this year I focus mostly on documentation, on the development portal, and also a bit on the user manual. Uh, hi, I'm Lucas. I'm mostly working on Cycles, but currently also finishing Udem. Hi, I'm Howard. I work on modeling tools, mostly Bevel, but also Boolean, which will be released very soon. New Boolean. Hi, I'm Monique. I've past year I've done, I think, most of my time bug fixing, and uh, patching, and uh, I am Blender Education. Hi, my name is Sebastian, and I'm working on fluid simulations. Hi, my name is Hans. I've been working on Bevel recently. Hi, I'm Dalai. I'm working as a, one of the co development coordinators with Nathan Lettery. <laughs> Big show of hands for the team here. OK, let me show hands if you have questions. Who has a question? Over there. Hi, uh, David Gilson from the UK. Um, I think my question is probably for Jax. Um, big animation nerds fan. Um, any idea when modifiers will become nerds instead of just things in a sidebar? So a couple of months ago, we had to decide whether we want to do particles or procedural modeling first. And in the end, we decided to do particles first because we really want to get rid of the old particle system and get rid of the code and have something better. The plan is to go into procedural modeling and modify our nodes um, after the particle system rewrite. More questions. Questions, questions, questions. So I have a question about uh, Alembic. Um, is there, like, what's kind of the timeline on, say, uh, bringing in uh, animated camera data, or like I guess just generally non-mesh data. Um, I am currently thinking about a new layer inside the animation system, because right now um, there is a patch available by Kevin Dietrich that loads some camera parameters, but it is it requires some some nasty jumps through hoops uh, that I'd rather avoid. Um, so I can't really give you a timeline because it's all very much design phase yet. But we have a, a, I have some ideas to put it in the animation layer in the same 
as uh, you have keyframes and drivers, and then you would also get loading stuff from cache. Thank you, Sibran. I have a question over there. The guy from the first row, I can go there. Oh, there's right there, yeah. Um, <laughs> user, uh, user interface question. Currently, it's a little awkward to work on uh, multiple windows in Blender on multiple monitors because you have to click twice to give focus and then start working. I don't, I don't know if that's something that would be easy to modify or, or uh, and I don't know who to ask that question to, but that's kind of my question. All right, uh, it's Julian or William. That's the question I have. I guess Julian. There are so many this year. Okay, if we go to fabricator.developer.planner.org right now, um, there's a task for this in the user interface project, and it's a high priority choice, so it's actually something that we really want to get fixed finally. Uh, but it is a bit of a hassle. I had to do quite some stuff there for the file browser, and you really need to dig into the low-level operating system dependent stuff. So yeah, it is a big hassle, and we probably need to do some trickery and to do stuff that the operating system APIs aren't written to do, uh, but yeah, it's a high priority thing and we want to get it done as soon as possible. Uh, hello, I have a question on the particle system and I wonder uh, if you have, a, a pl if you are planning to do a level, of, a level of detail system for the particles, because for example, when you have uh, vegetation, uh, I would like that automatically what's far, uh, get some, uh, so maybe also some different mesh or from a different level of subdivision? To me, it seems like this is not particle system specific, but more like instancing specific question. So it should be part of some instancing system. And I don't see any real reason why we can't have it, just not my priority currently. So. This is also something that the library override system can help with when you start having different instances and having overrides on them. But Sian, do you want to? Yeah, you could have different revisions, for example, or variants of the same assets with different levels of details. So you can just switch between them in the from the outliner, for example, and it would apply to all scene or automatically. Okay. First of all, I would like to say a big thank you for all your hard work. I admire you. <laughs> Huge respect for that. And now the question. We have something like cyclist camera visibility checkbox, and I would like to ask if we would have something like that in EV also. Irun, you're the drone manager resident developer. <laughs> well, if it is possible, we will have it. We do have EV as its own standalone engine, but one of their goals is to be totally compatible with the cycles workflow. Why you don't have it? I don't know. I think it would be possible. But uh, Clement is the lead developer on that. And then he's not here. But then Lucas is going to fill in for him. Yeah. Um, I have to say that I'm not an expert on this. So I might be wrong on this. But my assumption would be that due to how EV works, it's hard to implement overrides because, for example, a reflection, everything is done in screen space. So if you don't want to reflect the objects that's on the screen, you can't reflect anything because you don't know what's behind it in a rasterization pipeline. So I would assume that the only thing you could do is hide it completely or not, and we already have viewport visibility for that. I see. Thank you. Of course, with light probes, you can get a lot of these done with have only a collection reflecting, affecting reflection. So we gotta have, have to find our way around that. So, a question for the interface: uh, Is the one one on one project uh, something that we can expect in the future? <laughs> Tom, do you wanna do you wanna answer this one? Uh, it, it's a secret project. We don't talk about it. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> now, um, that I mean, you know me. I like to dream futures and plans, and uh, to think. Well, we have to make Blender so much more awesome because it's still not good enough. And the 101 project is about having a, uh, a 2.8 compatible uh, startup file uh, template, which would be more easy or co uh, for t teachers to put in high school or so. And it could be a UI with only some monkeys and some textures, and you drop them in the, in the 3D viewport. And it's a proof of concept to uh, 
show to trainers and teachers that they can use Blender to configure environments in which they can uh, teach people something. Uh, but to do that, I think the code is almost finished for it, but we still need people on board to set it up, to set it up as a project without adding more burden to them. So I've been uh, put a little bit on the back on this, like the guy said, Tom, it's nice if you do this, but uh, not with them, right? So it's a bit, I'm, I'm waiting for the right moment uh, to put it back. Yep. The, the other part, if I may answer as well, the other part of the answer is that the 101 project as, a, as like a, a separate uh, thing is, is a lot less necessary with a lot of development that has happened and will happen. So you have things like the toolbar and active tools that makes it easier to use Blender more visually. You don't need to know about all the hotkeys. Another thing that will, that will enable uh, usage of Blender that is a lot more sort of immediate and, and intuitive is the asset manager. So you could, you could sort of drag things together, drag in materials, um, that kind of thing. Uh, so there, there are lots of developments. But the asset manager is Planned, what? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, so th th that will uh, should greatly help as just a base, basic built-in feature. And now we have things like left-click select by default. So you see Blender moving in that direction, becoming more powerful and easier to use over time. Um, Julian yeah? to okay. Julian wants to add something very brief about that. Yeah, really brief. Like one of the things that I've I'm always being told when I talk to uh, teachers or to some teachers. Um, they say that people, or the idea that kids always struggle to use Blender and want a really simple Blender is sometimes not really true. It's, it seems like it's more the teachers that struggle with a complex Blender than kids, actually. And so I, I rather spend time, I rather spend time improving Blender as a whole than focusing on simplifying things for the specific thing. Yeah. It's still the 101, something that uh, we still see as a project. For 3D printing, for example, you might want a subset of Blender, and you're going to get it. Next. Hi. Um, I have a question on the new particle system. Uh, right now, we have like a, a start and end emission process. Uh, does it will convert it in a rate process, because it can be really practical for us? Uh, you might, what? Oh, yeah, I, thought I, I want to get the Manta flow to talk as well. <laughs> so. So I think the question was if we can have, instead of a start and end frame for the emission, just a rate that you can keyframe things. Yes, sorry. Um, if you go and on the builder.blender.org and then go to the experimental branch and test the functions branch, which is where the current state of the particle system is in, um, you will see that, in fact, the mesh emitter already has this functionality right now. OK, great. Thank you. First, a question to uh, a question to everybody. Um, who experienced having the viewport in 2.8 slower than in 2.7? Not many, and but uh, is it it's, valid? It's same with me. So, um, is so there the a, a good reason? Therefore, is this something that's being worked on? Because yeah, I'm there is a reason for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it's my fault, so uh, I take all the blame, but... <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we, uh, we uh, first went to a new OpenGL level uh, ver version, what uh, also add a lot of burden into how to uh, get the GPUs ready and get the GPUs drawing uh, correct. Uh, we all know about it, and uh, the, the, all the developers are, are uh, working on it to improve the system. And we have some ideas to improve it, but it's, it's a long run to, uh, to get it all in, uh, in there. So we know about it. <laughs> Maybe Mike wants to add something about it as well. Mike did one of the early engineering, engineering for the new drawing API. Yeah. Well, well, if you're if you're blaming the new thing on the new OpenGL, then that is my fault, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, as far as why it's slow, I mean, uh, one of the things was uh, that I noticed was slow to resize windows and things like that, and that's about reallocation of um, 
of buffers because we're drawing into buffers instead of uh, drawing to the directly to the screen. And so that's a thing. But uh, in normal usage, you don't have to do that. And what makes it slow is that, I guess, I don't know. I mean, I can think of one specific thing that could be improved, and I might, I might pitch in, but it's like, eh, yeah. Can I just ask a follow-up question? Because are you sure you don't, you're not, you don't mean that transforming things in edit mode is slow? Is that, that could be what, what you mean as well, because that's a little bit not so much viewport related, but. Because it has to rebuild it behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, th throughout the 2.8, we tried to, uh, the main goal was to have a playback animation as fast as we can. At the, even if we had to sacrifice performance elsewhere. So it really depends on where we're facing it. I'm not surprised it might happen. It's more, uh, way more workload to the shader, to the graphic card with 2.80. But I expect in production computers to be a decent result. People working in the studio are seem to be fine. But we're gonna get improved, I hope. Not asking for more uh, complexitations, but uh is there any perspe perspective for uh, programmable OpenGL or shaders? The programmable OpenGL, the, um, the one that's only, I think it's not compatible with Mac, right? No, it's just uh, that you can create your own uh, uh, shader code in Eevee. Ah, oh, right, right, right. Another first one to ask this in the conference is about how can I have my own material in Eevee made by myself. Does anyone want to comment on this room maybe? Basically, maybe I can add a little bit that throughout the, the EV at 2.80, we changed the whole underlying uh, drawing API and draw code. We actually, we still, well, we did um, a new API to help anyone drawing with the add-ons. We had a draft in the beginning to have a whole engine that could be 100% OpenGL or to allow for something like Lux render or Arnold, whatever external engine you plug into Blender to have its own custom GLS drawing. It never went out of the paper. Um, we still haven't seen the need from the, the other engines that would help maintain this, so that's maybe one of the reasons I didn't pursue it further. But maybe you can help. <laughs> oh, hi. Uh, hi, um, I had a question about uh, Blender interactive mode and uh, what the timeline was on that when it would be released and if there would be future plans for support with uh, um, web deployment. Don, do you want to answer that one? Don, do you want to answer about the one about the Blender Interactive? Basically, we tried to, or we had a design for how to replace what once was the Blender game engine with whole interaction in the UI. And if you think about the tool project with everything has a gizmo, the VR project, which we're working on, which everything is, uh, it can, we are inside the viewport to work on, is a, was a move in that direction. However, to really wrap it, to really have it as interactive mode, we didn't get the developer to do it. We had someone that um, maybe would be able to do it, he didn't have the time, and we kind of had to prioritize everything else, which is a lot, so sorry, but there's no, there's no timeline on that. Sorry. I think there was someone here, no? I think it was here first. Well, after no. you. Hi, I have a question about the new Bevo modifier. Uh, I saw a presentation, by the way, great. Thank you for your work. You were using the UI graph to create a new profile to use on a Bevo. Uh, have you considered using a Bezier curve instead, a 3D curve? Because that's easier to control and it might be easier to save profiles to use later. So for some background, the question was about the custom bevel profiles, which should be coming in 282. Yeah, um, and the so I would like to add the, um, sharing the curve with a busier curve object in the viewport, actually. So I'd like to work on that at some point, and it should be fairly doable. Yeah. Thank you. There's also a chance for people to ask about the code, the development, how does my patch get into the Blender? People have been asking those, so it's not only about the users. Some of us haven't had a question here. So I think he was here for, oh, sorry, get in line. Um, first off, the EV viewport has been incredible and revolutionized my workflow. Um, but along those lines, I've noticed that when I try to render out the EV viewport, um, it's significantly slower, even if I'm just rendering out, as if in the OpenGL viewport in 279, when I'm just trying to render out the viewport settings. 
um, equivalently, I get significantly slower uh, render times. And if I'm tr and trying to render out a significant portion of, like a significant frame count, um, I can preview it at 60 frames per second in the viewport, but then when I render it out, it's something like five frames per second uh, at a render speed. Uh, is, are there any plans to improve that, or am, is there something that I'm doing wrong? I will first answer the question, what happens, uh, why, why is it slower? And basically, when you do it in the viewport, uh, it's rendered by the GPU, and it's displayed directly on the graphical card, so that's, that's, that's fast. And uh, if you're doing a, 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 a play blast in the viewport, it only uh, calculates a single sample. So in the in uh, when you render to 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 an image, a lot of other other stuff will will happen. It renders f 64 samples. So, uh, but uh, that's not the main case. What happens? What happens next is that the GPU Im image is copied back to the CPU, and on uh, modern graphical cards, that's a really uh, 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 slow process. Uh, you can only do it 20 times per second. That's the main burden of uh, of that. Why do we do it? Uh, why do we co copy it back to the uh, to the CPU? That's for the color management. That's for the sequencer. That's for the compositor. And basically, that's that's the slow the slowdown, the copying back from the GPU to the CPU. Um, texture painting. Um, Oh, please get up. <laughs> Texture painting. Um, what would be really cool is to be able to paint to textures that are not the active color map and see the rendered view. Say if you've got a black and white map for switching between two textures to paint on a black and white but see the mix between your textures, materials. Look at that. Our first feature request is, is nicked in as a question. But <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to answer something around that? The, feature, the plans for texture painting, Pablo? Currently, texture paint has an insane amount of issues related, like f starting from the brush engine, how it's designed. So I want to like think of and or make a new design on how textures will work and how we are going to tag textures with channels to paint uh, PBR materials and to have multi-layer painting. And obviously that is going to come with that. But we need to get the basic stuff uh, right first, like the brush engine, like rotating the 2D view. So I think uh, we should start getting that right first before, before doing advanced cool stuff. What you're asking about, which is, could you see the final result while you paint in the viewport? And you can already do that if you. Blender already has a separation between the active painting channel and whatever we're seeing. We can just see in the EV, then everything's composed, and it could just be painting on the blend uh, channel. But kind of. But as Pablo said. Uh, Udin, multi uh, layer texture painting. There's so many things you want to add, but they have to be done properly. So luckily we have people here to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, uh, I would like to ask um, about the recent AMD sponsorship. And uh, there was uh, mentioned Vulkan API integration into Blender. Uh, what does it mean uh, more generally? And what does would it bring uh, GPU uh, in, uh, rendering in cycles on Mac? Thanks. Okay. So what does it mean now that we are going to have more incentive to have Vulkan in Blender? Not a lot of consumers. Well, um, it's about the, uh, the, f the um, OpenGL is not being developed any, any anymore for a long time. Uh, so we need to, uh, to go to, to, to a newer version and, uh, or, or newer uh, render API, and that's Vulkan. Uh, basically, the step of uh, Blender 2.8 was first to get up to a level, OpenGL 3.3, so it's easier to switch to another render uh, uh, engine. And uh, uh, Vulkan is our choice, uh, so we will go that way. 
uh, but it's not an easy task. It's uh, we um, uh, Falcon has is, is 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 really optimized for for gaming and for distributing gamings and applications or 3D software app app application. It's quite hard to get that uh, fit into Falcon. Uh, but uh, uh, I know that Clement has a plan for it. How to how how to how to execute it? Uh, it's 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 really up uh, finding time and uh, to uh, do that. And afterwards, a lot of stuff will uh, become available uh, to EV to whatever. We just don't. Uh, there's a there's a chance that there's not going to be great performance improvements. Although Vulcan is praised as it is, and it's fantastic because uh, the architecture we're pursuing is not really thought to work in tiles and this kind of optimization without huge rev revamp, which one do? Get up, get up. Yeah, I would like to know about the undo system because it seems really slow. <laughs> Hello, Bastian. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Well, exactly, it's not his fault, he's just helping here. There's a branch, right? There is a branch for the asset engine system, yes, and uh, like we have plans to get it the, the first initial version into 82 or 283. Why, Why is it slow? Because I've been working on a lot of other things. No, 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 but uh, wait. Why is undo is low in 2.8 and 2.79? And part of this is that we're now having copyright on everything, and then Bastian's gonna come up. Yeah, the main issue is that after each undo, undo step, we have to rebuild the wall uh, depth graph. So you have to reevaluate all the all your modifiers, all your, a lot of things. So that's what is making undo slow currently. And uh, globally, the plan is to undo less, if I can say that. So that <laughs> we will only undo things that change and try to keep every oh, the whole data of things that didn't change in an undo step, including the old evaluated data, so that you don't have to rebuild it. So ideally, we should gain a lot of uh, speed, especially on complex scenes with that system. And that is planned for 82. And that should give 2.8 in pair with 2.79. And then from there on, it can maybe keep improving, can cache the modifier stack all the way to the last one for the active object. So we're tweaking something that's then they really, really yeah, got a quick, quick iteration. Uh, hello, is there a roadmap or at least hope to drop the old uh, internal texture for modifiers and be able to use texture nodes for displace modifier, for example? Oh, tough one. Jack, maybe? Oh. <laughs> we removed most of the Blender internal textures and it kept only in a few places. And <laughs> so there isn't really a schedule for texture nodes currently. Like we definitely do plan to implement texture nodes. And when you have texture nodes, I don't like it should be easy to use them in modifiers. If we uh, probably we won't even have modifiers at that point anymore. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's just you have nodes. We <laughs> right because you have nodes. Um, so yeah, we, when you have texture nodes, we can use them in for, for procedure modeling and everything. I don't see why not, it just takes time. Maybe for cycles, why cycles doesn't have its own texture nodes? Let's see, Stefan. The only thing for cycles for that is in having more texture nodes, of course, as in the texture nodes, as in like more procedural textures, more various procedural textures. Uh, well, to a certain degree, is the more code we add to cycles. Traditionally, we always had a problem. If we made cycles more and more complex, it would get harder to get it to run on GPUs. Sometimes it would actually fail to run at all on certain GPUs, or it just would get progressively slower to more code and more complex we made cycles. Um, uh, on I if you're leaving GPUs aside, you can go crazy with anything you want with open shading language. and maybe one of the long-term goals could actually be using open shading language as well on the, on the GPU as well. And then you can actually create your own shader nodes and go crazy with any texture any way that you like. That would, in my opinion, be an ideal future. There's parts of 
open Shanig language that are already working with uh, CUDA. I am not aware of anyone that has public support for OpenCL. Um, we'll see. I mean, it would be really cool to have that. Um, I don't think there's anyone actively working right now on, on really, really adding like a very complex system. And we've, ha we've had a new few new procedurals being added recently. Um, it's just a judgment you have to make. Like, is it really, uh, is adding that extra code, extra complexity, extra maintenance to an already complex engine worth the effort? Or are we like adding one feature and blocking all the users from getting more speed? Well, that's for my curiosity. Uh, the two seven, nine and all the texture nodes are still on 2.8. Oh, we got rid yeah. of but Some only of for brushes and things? Or? They are unusable, says Bastian. Yeah. It's there, but it's kind of in a exactly. dormant yeah. state. Yeah. Good. So. Uh, there was one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering about motion blur in EV. Uh, how's it going with that? And There's an, uh, we do have the camera motion blur and we have a task that, uh, that we will get object motion blur. Uh, it's just one of the many tasks that still needs to be done. Hi, um, I'm a big fan of the adaptive subdivision and um, micro displacement. Is there any plans to uh, uh, develop that further and maybe have support for EV? Oh, for EV. It's an open subdiv, right? Well, micro, micro, we said micro displacement, micro surfacing, right? Do you know, does anyone know for the cycles? Maybe that Stefan or Lucas, give us uh, your opinion on the matter. Uh, well, I think there is still some work going on with the micro displacement and cycles, but I'm not really up to date on it right now. And as for EV, I don't see a technical reason why it would not work, but as I said before, I'm not an expert in EV at all, so there might be something that prevents it, but I think it might work, maybe. Those more advanced programming shaders could even work on EV, but then whenever you switch to Vulkan and to Metal, if you want to support an Apple, it might be an issue. That's what you was going to say, so there you go. Next. I hear someone asking about Udim. Lucas, I'll get to you, sorry. Well, when is your thing going to happen in Blender? <laughs> um, that depends on how, do we want the full feature set right now, or is it, uh, because right now, most things are working, the only thing that's still blocking it is uh, the workbench engine, which is kind of important for texture painting, so we would probably want support for that. I'll probably need help from, yeah, from Jeanne or anything, anyone who knows more about that. And apart from that, it's mostly a case of just review and organizing things and making sure that there are no bugs left because most of the code has been just sitting around for a year and things have changed. And yeah, just some polishing and workbench and review. Now for the real question. Okay. So um, I was trying to uh, modify a stroke in a, the sculpt mode um, via API, Python API. And I got an uh, error saying uh, incorrect context, which I was told that that's uh, the, the wrong uh, mouse input. So what I'm wondering is, um, is it possible to program f uh, through the API uh, a stroke for the sculpt mode um, through just programmatically doing that and possibly recording and playing back sculpt? I mean, this is... There are several levels in that question. On the generic level of the API, the Python API so, uh, operators in Blender are expected to run with a certain set of um, data which are featured by your context. When you are running that operator from the command line or from a script, you often don't have the same context that the one is expected. So you have to fill it your, uh, generate a context yourself with the data that is required. So that's the technical part. For the, um, the sculpting thing, I will let uh, one of the sculpting guys answer. But in general, just in general, you have the, um, the you can define curves in the API already for painting. I should be able to do it for sculpting too. 
I can I have a prototype somehow um, some working more or less and for storing the strokes and repeating them in history if that is what you're trying to do but it only works on scale mode so I need to do something similar for texture paint if we want to keep compatibility in all modes if, if we can have only for scale mode I don't make the patch it's fine we do have something similar for the MPX project. They're doing, via Python add-on, a way to control the strokes for sculpting and grease pencil via, uh, via, via Python. So it's a, I think we got some answers here. Yeah, hello. Um, I'm fairly new to uh, Blender. I used 3ds Max for 20 years just to make the switch. Um, but <coughs> one of the first things I was looking for is a material library, like a built-in material library. Is that something that's uh, in the pipeline? We do call it differently, call Asset Manager. Yeah. What's, the, what's the timeline for Asset Manager, Bastien? Well, Asset Management itself is for 82 or 83, the first basic uh, release of it, and then we will, of course, keep building on it. And for the material library, there's also the cloud on blender.org, uh, which features a set of um, easy-to-use shaders already. And of course, uh, we have the Blender Cloud add-on, which allows you to use some of the assets that are in the Blender Cloud directly into Blender. And there's a few independent projects. We had the Blender Kit presenting something uh, last night and all that. So asset and manager, those are going to be the main of the main project that's going to take care of that. Hi, um, I'm a hard surface modeler, and I heard during the introductions that there's a new Boolean system in the works. So just could you tell us about that? W what's going to come from it, and how will it uh, improve modeling workflow? A new Boolean system from scratch. <laughs> yeah, so the a lot of people complained when Quark was taken away. It was taken away because you know, there was nobody who really wanted to maintain it. It wasn't maintained at source. So I've been writing Boolean from scratch. I'm getting close. The main things I'm addressing are uh, you can have coplanar intersections. Uh, it, it uses doubles inside instead of floats, so some of the precision errors will probably go away. And, uh, and you probably won't have to have completely closed things to intersect. It, it'll be allowed to have a little bit of leak there. Uh, just speak closer. It's going to be fantastic. It's already fantastic. When do we have it in Blender? In a month or two. <laughs> I have a question. Ah. Uh, for the audience, who is still using 2.79? Aha, wow. Now I want to know what is it that we have to do to make you move to 2.8? No, for me, I just need my time, but I'm moving soon now. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> who else? Is there something we really have to do to get 2.8 working for you? I mean, I, for re rendering in Eevee, I have to use screen capture for uh, like rendering a viewport render. Um, where I could do the OpenGL in the last one. Um, and if I'm sending to like a server farm, then I can't just open up a screen capture and screen capture the viewport. Well, is that for offline rendering or? Offline, yeah, I, I, what do you mean by screen capture? Um, my previous question was about how like I can view uh, render at 60 frames per second, but then when I'm actually rendering it out to, the, to my files, it's about five frames per second. Okay, okay, okay. But if I open up a screen capture, I can quote unquote render at 60 frames per second. But I could have done that in 2.79 at 60 frames per second or, or faster even. So. But, uh, you mean uh, the playback speed of the viewport for yeah. things? Okay. So we have to make Blender much faster. No, it's for only of for course. offline rendering. It's only for offline okay. rendering. There are a few, a few people that have a similar problem because it could render very fast with the Blender internal. But for EV, they don't know how to use a render farm with GPU, and that's a. Uh, of the problem, but some people are fixing that already. Well, more, more two seven nine features, okay? Yeah. What? The compositor. The compositor. The compositor. The compositor it works fine. <laughs> <laughs> Is the compositor not working as we had in two point seven nine? Real. It's not rhetoric. 
Sorry. I mean, 2009 and 2.8 in composites are the same, yeah. basically. Oh. <laughs> 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 we come back to that at the end, okay? We come back to that. Who else has 279 things that we have to fix in 280? Over there? Can you just scream and we repeat? Thank you. Uh, we passed a project uh, from 2.79 uh, to 2.8, and we have a very lack of performance when we had a lot of modifiers like array or subsurface, and it, it was very complicated because we can't uh, finish the project because of that. We dropped to 24 frames per second to 5 frames per second. For It was really, really hard. So you mean arrays and, and particles? That's what you said? No, no, arrays and subsurface modifiers. A subsurface object. Does anyone want to? Well, yeah, okay, well, subs we have the open subdiv in 2.80, but only the CPU one. So that's one of the problems people are noticing. Like, it's slower now than it had. Yeah, because now it's CPU, used to be GPU. We hope that Sergei is gonna work on that. Oh, hold on, hold on. So one of the reasons that the uh, open subdivision is slower than the previous method is that the previous method we had in 2.79 before we deprecated and removed it did a lot of um, like shortcuts in the subdivision uh, method. So and for a lot of people that was a problem because it uh, produced low quality results. And because we didn't want to maintain it ourselves, we moved to open subdiv that uh, computes very high quality subdivision um, surfaces. And the issue with that is because it's high quality, it takes longer time to compute, and especially if you have um, vertices that don't have um, four edges. So if you have something with three edges, five edges, or more, it becomes a lot uh, slower because it has to do specific uh, tricks to figure out how the uh, mathematical surface for the subdivision surface will look. <coughs> Sergey has uh, looked into this quite a bit, and it's a hard nut to crack because a lot of the optimizations we thought we could do wasn't possible. So now we're kind of stuck between uh, not really knowing if we can speed up the open subdivision on the CPU anymore. We're still looking into uh, the GPU stuff, but we're not sure either because it seems like uh, it's quite a common problem with open subdiv in itself that it's not really built for, or ma maybe it's built for, but at least in our cases, it's slow when you edit the meshes. If you just have a static mesh, pull it through, it caches the result, then it's fast because it doesn't have to do these computations again and again and again. But in Blender, because it's a generative system, it's slow because then it has to recalculate all those stuff every time for the mesh. Am I, am I allowed to add a quick question? I don't know. Okay. Uh, about open subdiv uh, and why it's not on GPU, because like if topology changes and things like that, then you have to recalculate all these things. But just uh, once you have things set up and you're animating, I mean, that's what it's exactly designed to do. So like, what's the hold up? Well, for, for the array modifier, it generates geometry. So it's, it's, if you have the topology is the same, it doesn't change per frame, then it's fast. But as soon as you have something generative like Boolean modifiers or something else that changes the topology of the mesh, yeah. Yeah. So in the 2.80, we removed two big things like Blender internal. Who's missing Blender internal rendering? Oh, uh, still a couple of people. Uh, I heard that one person that you told me that they use uh, offline rendering or servers, and Blender internal is fantastic for that. But we'll be we working on it. The game engine, come on, the game engine. Wow, how many? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Huh? That's not very enthusiastic, right? So this is not uh, a super high priority. But how is interaction mode coming in general? Well, yeah, they ask, right? We're doing the beats that can allow us to create a whole thing, a design interactive mode. We answered that question already. It's all good, it's all good. No, it's a 2.7, the right have a real question here of me. Anything more 2.7 stuff? Yep, yep. Um, I'm still using 2.79 for uh, smoke simulations because subframe interpolation in 2.8 is broken on smoke sims. 
Smoke simulation, Sebas. Yeah, um, I'm, I've seen that it's broken in 27, or in, it works in 279 and it doesn't in 28, but um, I didn't see a point in putting too much effort into fixing it because the new system is coming out in 282. So you just have to wait a bit for the next version. <laughs> Thank you, Shun. So uh, we are still not. Get up. Ah, get up, stand, stand up. up. We are still not using 2.8 because our uh, in our company the whole pipeline relied on the GLSL shaders of 2.7, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, uh, Dalai, you know the problem that I talked with you about it. Uh, that's, uh, I just wanted to mention it, and I'm happy that you're already uh, um, kind of... Working. Yes, they were working with node materials, and they would export the node yeah. materials and we use this in their engine. But we with EV, there's only a hacky way of doing it, so that's on the works. Do you have a I think there's a question here. Uh, uh, Next year, the next after we're done with 2.7, 2.80. Yeah, it's not about the 2.7, uh, but uh, there's still 2.7 people there. Sure. One of us, one of us. No, I don't use it. <laughs> um, I'm not completely sure. Uh, sorry. I'm not completely sure, uh, but uh, I think that uh, you cannot uh, OpenGL render uh, the sequencer. Is that right? You can. Yeah, you can? You're wrong. Uh, maybe, maybe, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I can. So I can render uh, the grease pencil. Did, uh, oh, grease pencil specific, maybe. Easy. Yeah, the, the annotation because it now it's annotation in in the sequencer because I I did some tutorials or thing and I I use grease pencil to to mark things. But now you mean two point eighty eighty or? I don't know. Eighty is the future for me. So okay, it is okay. one is like wow. <laughs> Well, we are working on the sequencer. We've seen a few talks about that. The Grease Pencil team is particularly keen, and Daniel should be here, by the way, Daniel Lara, particularly keen on having you know, the editor-centric pipeline. We saw that from Tangent as well, doing Grease Pencil. So even if it's not working, we're going to get there. I can't see. Yeah. OK. Uh, back to the asset manager. How would the asset manager? Uh, if it's not 2.7, we have a line here. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything else more 2.7? Anyone else still hanging to it? We had a whole presentation about the blending game engine. It was fantastic, Ferro 3D. So good luck with that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, is that, oh, OK. <laughs> um, it, I have an, a question uh, for a thing that was in 2.7 already and is still in 2.8, wow. and that is a little bit for Python development, and um, it is uh, especially for the console. I think that has been going on for quite a while, that is uh, that you have to toggle the console window to get the actual output from the print commands, for example. And on Windows, that works quite fine because you have that toggle console command. On Linux, for example, you actually have to make like a shortcut to start Blender via the command line so you can actually see the output. Is there maybe any way whatsoever to get the console output visible inside the Blender window without having to toggle all of that? And that's feature requests. Look at them, feature requests coming like, <laughs> like they're nothing. Does anyone want to comment on that? But that's not preventing you from using 2.80, so you're sneaky bastard. I mean, uh, hmm. we don't have any concrete planning for that or so, but what we plan is having the info editor reramp re so we can put all kinds of information actually in there, like detailed statistics and um, error logs and notification logs and everything. Um, and we could sort of redirect standard out to that and have the prints in there. Uh, I guess that could sort of work. But yeah, I don't think, we don't have any concrete planning for that. It's uh, I think William said before, just uh, the edit mode is really slow if you have a lot of modifiers on your thing, exactly. uh, which makes me go back to 2.79 if I have a lot of uh, sub-demodeling to do, because I need to see what's going to be my subsurface surface. But it's like really slow. Like I drag a vertex, 
and I wait a half a second to see where it's going, and it's somewhere way beyond where it's supposed to go. What, what's the scale of your project in your computer station, sir? Say again? What, how big is the project you work on? No, no not big. Just if you have a lot of just one file, one sub modeling object, sometimes it's just a movable vertex is really slow, and then it draws and it's just all over the place. It's somewhere. I think William mentioned it before. <laughs> William, I'm going to put that on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just, uh, yeah, no, but it's, it's <laughs> 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 but, but you're right, that's, that's probably what more people are experiencing as being slow rather than the viewport drawing. I mean, the orbiting the viewport is quite s fast, but manipulating vertices is the slow part, which has to do with the depth graph and the new open subdiv uh, thing that we was, was already discussed. Can, there's still 2.7 topic, okay? Yeah, 2.7 topic. I get this question every week, so I want to point people to an official answer <laughs> regarding baking, something that people are missing, baking the displacement. It was possible in uh, Blender internal. It's not in 2.8. So what's your official answer? <laughs> All right. Who likes to talk about baking? <laughs> we can talk about the, the baking, the other part, but... I think the official answer right now is there are two tasks for displacement and some other type of baking that used to be possible on developer blender org. Both of them are created but have zero comments and that generally means it is planned, it will be coming back, it will be added to cycles in the future. <laughs> now we're going for the final two questions. Very quick. So. So w in the work that I do, we, um, we, need, um, cu we use custom properties on individual objects, and we want to use the same shaders uh, between those. And uh, I'm just wondering if there's any technical um, limitations to being able to access uh, custom properties um, in, in cycle shaders. Um, there is no technical limitation, it would just need to be implemented. The main concern, as far as I know, uh, there is the user interface, because you would just type it into the attribute node, but there should be some kind of visual feedback on whether what you typed in is actually going to work in the render, so we will probably need to work with some uh, UI experts, like some UI experts sitting over there, maybe. <laughs> okay, maybe not. So yeah, that's definitely possible, and it is planned. We pass it on, pass it on, pass it on, and add with Shibren, yeah. <laughs> what? No, it's, uh, it's, it's over, the topic's answered. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's all good. Okay, Super then we're happy. We're done, we're done, we're done. with questions. <laughs> no, we're done, we're on, because we're going to end with a new tradition, which I tried as an experiment last year, and, and that is the audience will vote for a feature. Woo! <laughs> I know there's manipulations going on here, yeah. but we are going to make it a fair vote. So I want to have like uh, three, two, three, four topics where you feel like the Blender Foundation should spend more attention on, for example, by giving a developer a grant to work on that specific area in Blender. So can I hear a suggestion from the audience? <laughs> the compositor has been noted. It's there. Hmm? What else? Just scream, just scream, it's easier. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, I was thinking about uh, deep compositing. Deep compositing. Deep compositing. But that's compositing, yeah, but deep. Compos we can <laughs> yeah, it's part. But it's do part. the compositing people also want deep compositing? Yes, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think other features. Everything node. We're working on that. <laughs> We're working on that. A, a native voxel object that, that, that's addressable, like that, that's, that, that's essentially a wrapper for OpenVDB. Yeah, right? OpenVDB. Having VDB. access to all. Yeah. That's like an add-on. You can code that in no, one no, 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 no. It, we have a, even a task for this. Oh, that, VDB, that kind of native, as a primitive in Blender. Yes, yeah, and it will uh, be a volume primitive. Bracket had this idea as a way to do it for cycles. Okay, so this is a good feature then. Ah, it must be fantastic. So how many people support this? 
Oh, you're voting like this. You're going to get a hard time beating the compositing mafia here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need something more popular than compositing. Come on. Uh, what? Oh. Nerbs. Nerbs. <laughs> Nerbs. I thought we wanted to remove Nerbs. <laughs> okay. That's still a Nerbs fan. Shout out. A separate workspace for lightning. Ah, that's also easy. Ah, that's Very a weekend easy. project for... Very easy. You can do weekday. that. No one works on the weekend. Ask one of those guys and they will do it like in, a, in a few hours for you. People there, just scream. Multi-layer texture painting. Oh. <laughs> what? 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 I make it multi-layer texture painting. Ah, multi-layer texture painting. We don't have that. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Duh. Well, what about uh, color management? What about working color management? Boo! Boo yes! <laughs> I see someone there asking for a snapping. No. What? what? Hair simulation. Grooming and hair grooming simulation. And hair, yeah. We have grooming. We yeah, have no, no, that has to be. Okay. What? what? UV editing of what? Ah, yeah. <laughs> We have UV editing, say something, <laughs> otherwise we forget. Parametric objects. Parametric objects. Oh, wow. But, but can, you, can you summarize that in one line, what it exactly means for you? Uh, so you, so you, still have, you still have your editing options after you start to modify, say, a cube or a... Or a it's more like a, 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 a real modifier stack. Without no no, it's uh, we know what it is. It's like you have a cube with six edges, and then you do everything, and then you change to four edges, but not a cube. Yeah, like it's a <laughs> proceed really procedural object that no geometry, only procedures. So, okay, with with booleans and everything. Okay, I think we have enough features now. Yeah. What? Don't worry. Unless someone's really desperate and is a someone really desperate. Uh. Camera tracking, who? Oh, sure, but uh, yeah, uh, whenever you try to make a Python macro sequence, it doesn't register on what object you click. It would be very cool if that would be added. No one's gonna vote for that. They want cool features. <laughs> 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 they want cool features. So, um, I can, if I'm fine, I will remember five of them. Okay. Uh, the, the, we're first going to do a poll for every five. I want to see hands and see uh, how the, the, the division is. Uh, is composite? Uh, the parametric objects in Blender. Can I see arms? Are you. Yeah? Okay. There was a. Composite. Multi. Uh, uh, composite can do last. Multi layer. Multi layer texture. <laughs> Multi-layer texture <laughs> editing. Ah, that's getting popular. Um, ah, compositing is uh, <laughs> getting there. But there were three, two more. Um, it was volumetric. Was oh, uh, hair, hair, hair editing and grooming. <laughs> yeah. Hair and grooming and volumetric. And volumetrics. Oh, that, that's like that. okay. And color management. Oh, we have that already. <laughs> color management. Attention to color management. Okay. Yes. So. <laughs> and the Oscar goes to? The Oscar, I think the, the compositor is feels a bit. Uh, <laughs> what are the top two now? I think it's composer and multilayer. Image, yeah, multilayer. Right? Okay. Now we're going to vote for only those two. Can I get arms for the multi-layer texture editing? And now the one for compositor. <laughs> it's like the sham. It's about the same, it's hard. It's like the sham, right? Uh, may, may <laughs> we have to do both? Yes, we have to do both? Okay, we do both. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, audience. Okay, we have to uh, wrap it up. Uh, big applause for the developers.
Holy shit, you're tiny. All of a sudden, it's like very apparent. <laughs>